A 63-year-old male with a past medical history of hypertension presents to the ED complaining of multiple symptoms. For the past two weeks, he notices nagging pain in his right lower leg. Additionally, he complains of having difficulty when putting on his favorite hat. Lab work is conducted, which is only remarkable for elevated alkaline phosphatase. Which of the following pathophysiologies best describe this disease process? A. Defective mineralization of osteoid. B. Autosom autosomal dominant defective collagen type 1 synthesis. C. Imbalance between osteoclastic and osteoblastic function. D. Inherited defect in bone resorption resulting in heavy fracture prone bone. Or E. Reduction in trabecular bone mass resulting in porous fracture prone bone. Ooh, that was a mouthful. Now pause the video if you want some time to think about this and make your own guess before I reveal the answer to you on the next slide. All right, here we go. The correct answer to this question is choice C, imbalance between osteoclastic and osteoblastic function. Let's look back at the clinical vignette here and see what information we were supposed to pick out in order to figure out what disease this is referring to. The first thing you'll note is that we're talking about an elderly male, right? We have a 63-year-old male. Key symptoms included nagging pain in the right lower leg and difficulty when putting on his favorite hat. And that's going to be the key buzzword here. Lab work showed elevated alk -fos. What we're talking about here is Paget's disease of the bone. And just as I've been doing in the past couple free question banks, I'm going to give you the formal explanation uh, just in case you like to refer to this similar to how regular question banks do this. Paget's disease of the bone is a disease process characterized by an imbalance between osteoclastic and osteoblastic function. The disease is usually seen in late adulthood and those greater than age 60. Currently, the etiology is not exactly known, but there's some evidence of viral origin. The disease has three distinct stages. The first stage is the osteoclastic stage, where bone gets resorbed. The second stage is the mixed osteoblastic-osteoclastic phase. The third and final phase is the osteoblastic phase, where poorly constructed bone gets layered on top. These stages result in fracture-prone bone that's overly thickened and sclerotic. Biopsy may reveal a mosaic pattern of lamellar bone. Symptoms of the disease include generalized bone pain due to microfracturing, hearing loss due to bony impingement on cranial nerves, and lion facies, that's a buzzword, due to craniofacial bone involvement. The classic buzzword or the classic scenario is an increase in somebody's hat size or difficulty putting a hat on, and that's basically due to enlargement of the skull due to the over overly thickened and sclerotic bone. Laboratory analysis might reveal an isolated, elevated alkaline phosphatase. Treatment for Paget's disease of the bone includes calcitonin and bisphosphonates. Some complications include high output cardiac failure, which is a very high, asso high yield association to know, um, due to the formation of AV shunts within the bone. The disease is also associated with osteosarcoma. So this is a, obviously an extensive and somewhat exhaustive summary of Paget's disease of the bone. This giant paragraph basically contains all of the information that you need to know uh, for USMLE or Comlex. But again, let's go back to the question here and think about the how, right? How were you supposed to think in this question? How were you supposed to get this right? And, and as part of the process of doing that, we need to look at the incorrect answers and determine what disease they're referring to and then work backwards and basically rule out those diseases with clinical reasoning. So choice A was defective mineralization of osteoid and that's referring to osteomalacia or rickets. Now remember in osteomalacia, what you're gonna see in the vignette is usually low vitamin D. And low vitamin D can occur in various settings. The, the most high yield tend to be a breastfed child, somebody with pancreatitis, somebody with cystic fibrosis, celiac disease, basically any disease process, breastfeeding not included, where there is impaired absorption of vitamins, and specifically vitamin D causing osteomalacia. The buzzwords or descriptions you wanna look for will be the waddling gait, the Harrison grooves, rachitic rosary, or the Marfan sign. If they give you labs for osteomalacia, they would point to evidence of hypocalcemia. 
And if you refer back to our question here, you just don't see any of this whatsoever. We have no reason to believe that this person has pancreatitis, cystic fibrosis, celiac, or, or any impaired absorption of vitamins. It's obviously not a breastfed child. There's no telltale symptoms of osteomalacia in terms of like rachitic rosary or the waddling gait. And there's no laboratory evidence of hypocalcemia. And because we're not seeing any of that, we can effectively rule out choice A, which refers to osteomalacia. Now, choice B, autosomal dominant, defective, collagen type 1 synthesis, that is referring to osteogenesis imperfecta. And I would argue to you that osteogenesis imperfecta is the easiest answer choice to rule out here. Because if they wanted you to pick osteogenesis imperfecta, they would describe the classic triad of hearing loss, blue sclera, and fractures. They might also talk about things like saber shins, limb bowing, or dental abnormalities. And if you go back to this practice question, you weren't given any of that whatsoever. The very, very high yield image that you could and likely will be shown on USMLE or Comlex if they want you to pick osteogenesis imperfecta is the picture you see here. And you can see the blue sclera. This picture in and of itself would be enough for you to pick anything referring to or describing osteogenesis imperfecta if you actually got this on your exam. But if we go back to our question here, there's nothing in the question stem pointing to osteogenesis imperfecta. And usually, not always, but usually this will present in a younger patient. So you'll have diagnosed this earlier on in their life and the, the diagnosis will be more clear. So because you don't see any of that, we can effectively rule out osteogenesis imperfecta. Let's go to choice D, inherited defect in bone resorption resulting in heavy fracture prone bone. This is referring to osteopetrosis. There's, there's honestly not a lot of information that you need to remember about osteopetrosis, but if they're going to give you this on an exam, look for the association with pancytopenia. You weren't given that when they talked about labs because, again, all they told you was there was an isolated, elevated ALKFAS. Um, but look for that association. Osteopetrosis is associated with pancytopenia. And this is usually going to be in children, right? The patient won't be 63. They might be and will be a lot younger. These patients will have a history of dysfunctional growth and failure to thrive because of osteopetrosis. And because we're talking about an older patient with a very different clinical picture, we can rule out choice D, osteopetrosis. Choice E says reduction in trabecular bone mass resulting in porous fracture prone bone. This is referring to osteoporosis. Now osteoporosis, you want to think about your elderly, obese, postmenopausal females. That's the kind of the classic presentation. You also want to think about patients that may be on any of the following drugs, warfarin, lithium, or glucocorticoids. Sometimes the question stems won't make this so obvious. For example, They'll describe somebody who clearly has bipolar disorder. They won't tell you explicitly that the patient's taking lithium, but they want you to connect the fact that the patient may be on lithium and therefore they may be predisposed to osteoporosis. That sort of clinical reasoning is really high yield and pretty impressive if you're able to do that on exams. So think about patients that might be taking any of these medications based on the description in the question. Now, a very high yield thing to remember for osteoporosis is that labs are typically normal. So if they give you laboratory derangements and they're describing some bony issue, you, you can basically rule out osteoporosis right off the bat. Now, going back to our question, you'll notice that we weren't given any of this. Our patient was a 63-year-old male. We have no reason to believe that it's an obese postmenopausal female. We also have no reason to believe that there's necessarily any predisposing factors that would lend itself to osteoporosis. And because of that, we can rule out choice E and safely conclude that the, the correct answer here is choice C. Now, again, if you happen to know the buzzword of, of difficulty putting on a hat, the choice was pretty clear cut, right? C was the, the correct answer um, very clearly. But if you didn't know that difficulty putting on a hat was associated with the correct answer, the point I'm making here is you could have worked backwards and looked at A, B, D, and E and ruled these out based on either the age not being right or not having the right clinical symptoms. 
So again, this is a very high yield process of thinking. You wanna train your brain to recognize these patterns, to work backwards, to ask yourself, if they wanted me to pick A, what would they have given me in the question? If they wanted me to pick D, they probably would have said this buzzword. And starting to think like that is how you're gonna score super high on USMLE or Comlex.